Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 218. O life that maketh all things new, the blooming earth, the thoughts of men, our pilgrim feet wet with thy dew, in gladness hither turn again. Hymn number 218. Scriptural this morning will be given by Nancy from New Jersey. Psalms. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. 1 Corinthians. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. 1 John. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 118. Holy Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Kindle every high desire. Cleanse my thought in thy pure fire. Hymn number 118.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. You can also find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can attend. So if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, please call us. We'll give you the number and would love to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 p.m., that's East Coast time, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers, so you can bring everybody. Let's see. Next week, or this, this Thursday, May 20, will be a meeting of the members. So for those of you who are members of the church, we will have our membership meeting Thursday, May 20 at 8 p.m. And if you can't join us in person, we will also broadcast it over our teleconference number. The, the main teleconference number for the church. So please join us, those of you who are members, Thursday, May 20th, 8 p.m. And after that, a couple days after that, on Saturday, May 22nd, we are going to have another Bible study session. So check the website for Bible study questions. And please join us Saturday morning, 10 a.m., May 22nd, You'll be happy that you did. And we have been printing and mailing. The June Full Text Lesson Sermon Booklet has been printed and mailed to subscribers. So if you're on that subscription, you can expect it to be delivered any day now. And we have several websites, as you know, in many different languages that send the Word of God literally all around the world. And one of the uh, articles that was recently put on our English website, I want to recommend because it's, it's a beautiful article. It's, uh, it's an excerpt from a book that has a number of articles by Mary Baker Eddy. This one is entitled, Home. So whether you are a homemaker or just a liver in your home, (laughs) this is a wonderful article about what home should be and what home really is by Mary Baker Eddy. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from Miscellaneous Writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading this morning will be given by Annie from Virginia. From page 422. For eight years, I suffered terribly with my eyes. I could not read 15 minutes without the most agonizing sick headache. Oculus called it a case of double vision and said that the only chance for a cure lay in the cutting of the muscles of the eyes. This was done, but the pain was worse than before. One of the most famous oculists of New York said I would simply have to endure it for life as it was a case of severe astigmatism. I suffered so that my health gave way. A friend spoke to me of Christian science, but I scoffed at the idea. Later on, in desperation, I asked her to lend me science and health with key to the scriptures, 
thinking I might be able to read five minutes a day in it. I opened the book at the chapter on physiology and began. Time passed unnoticed. Every page seemed illuminated. I said, this is everything or nothing. If everything, then you need no glasses. I took off the heavy ground glasses and went on. What a terrible headache I had the next morning, but I fought it with the truth laid down in the book. I said again, this is everything or nothing, and the truth triumphed. The headache ceased, but I felt miserably. I recalled what was said about chemicalization and persevered. In four days, my eyes were well. I read as many hours a day as I pleased. My strength returned. I conquered one belief after another until now, strong and well, I meet every belief with confidence. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. For two years, I have realized the peace and confidence which the knowledge that God is all-powerful and always present alone can give. Feeling a great desire to, spe- to spread Christian science, that it may do the good to others that it has to me, not only physically, but spiritually, I ask if you have any missionaries in the work. Being a member of the Episcopal Church, I have always sent what I could to help foreign missions through that church. Will it do the most good to continue so doing, as our foreign missionaries are devoted men? Or have you Christian science missionaries who devote their lives to the work? An an answer addressed to me or published in the journal would help one who is seeking to do right. Yours sincerely, KLT. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 14 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Mortals and Immortals. The Golden Text, Romans. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The responsive reading is from Psalms. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Elizabeth from Georgia will now read. The Bible, Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
John. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? First John. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. 1 Timothy I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. 1 Corinthians Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. David from Florida will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. In Christian science, the true man is governed by God, by good, not evil, and is therefore not a mortal, but an immortal. God made man immortal and amenable to spirit only. Life is eternal. We should find this out and begin the demonstration thereof. Life and goodness are immortal. Let us then shape our views of existence into loveliness, freshness, and continuity, rather than into age and blight. God creates and governs the universe, including man. The universe is filled with spiritual ideas which he evolves, and they are obedient to the mind that makes them. Mortal mind would transform the spiritual into the material, and then recover man's original self in order to escape from the mortality of this error. Mortals are not like immortals, created in God's own image, but infinite spirit being all, mortal consciousness will at last yield to the scientific fact and disappear, and the real science of being, perfect and forever intact, will appear. Man, in the likeness of God, as revealed in science, cannot help being immortal. So the inharmony resulting from material sense hides the harmony of science. Inharmony cannot destroy the divine principle of science. In science, man's immortality depends upon that of God good and follows as a necessary consequence of the immortality of good. Mortals are the counterfeits of immortals. They are the children of the wicked one, or the one evil, which declares that man begins in dust, or as a material embryo. 
In divine science, God and the real man are inseparable as divine principle and idea. Hence, man is not mortal nor material. Mortals will disappear, and immortals, or the children of God, will appear as the only and eternal verities of man. Mortals are not fallen children of God. They never had a perfect state of being, which may subsequently be regained. They were, from the beginning of mortal history, conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. Mortality is finally swallowed up in immortality. Sin, sickness, and death must disappear to give place to the facts which belong to immortal man. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. Progress is born of experience. It is the ripening of mortal man through which the mortal is dropped for the immortal. Either here or hereafter, suffering or science must destroy all illusions regarding life and mind and regenerate material sense and self. The old man with his deeds must be put off. Nothing sensual or sinful is immortal. The death of a false material sense and of sin, not the death of organic matter, is what reveals man and life harmonious, real, and eternal. Good deeds are immortal, bringing joy instead of grief, pleasure instead of pain, and life instead of death. Human birth, growth, maturity, and decay are as the grass springing from the soil with beautiful green blades, afterwards to wither and return to its native nothingness. This mortal seeming is temporal. It never merges into immortal being but finally disappears, and immortal man, spiritual and eternal, is found to be the real man. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, the law of mortal belief at war with the facts of immortal life, even with the spiritual law which says to the grave, where is thy victory? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. The great spiritual fact must be brought out that man is, not shall be, perfect and immortal. We must hold forever the consciousness of existence, and sooner or later, through Christ and Christian science, we must master sin and death. The evidence of man's immortality will become more apparent as material beliefs are given up and the immortal facts of being are admitted. The sinless joy the perfect harmony and immortality of life, possessing unlimited divine beauty and goodness without a single bodily pleasure or pain, constitutes the only veritable, indestructible man whose being is spiritual. This state of existence is scientific and intact a perfection discernible only by those who have the final understanding of Christ in divine science. Death can never hasten this state of existence, for death must be overcome, not submitted to, before immortality appears. When the illusion of sickness or sin tempts you, 
cling steadfastly to God and his idea. Allow nothing but his likeness to abide in your thought. Let neither fear nor doubt overshadow your clear sense and calm trust that the recognition of life harmonious, as life eternally is, can destroy any painful sense of or belief in that which life is not. Let Christian science, instead of corporeal sense, support your understanding of being, and this understanding will supplant error with truth, replace mortality with immortality, and silence discord with harmony. Science reveals the glorious possibilities of immortal man, forever unlimited by the mortal senses. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 254. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, low, sad, and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith and breathed in raptured song with love perfumed. Hymn number 254.
is my shepherd and I have all I need. All good and perfect gifts in flower and in seed. He lays me down upon Beside the peaceful waters and be healed. And even when I'm in the dry and thirsty land, I'm taking care of my shepherd is at hand. The one who sends the evening rain and morning snow is love. my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He said to table Let's now sing hymn number 93. Happy the man whose heart can rest, assured God's goodness ne'er will cease. Each day complete with joy is blessed. God keepeth him in perfect peace. Hymn number 93.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, the scientific statement of being, and the correlative passages from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, intelligence, nor substance in matter, or its infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the real. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Beloved, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. For we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Second John. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. Mm-hmm.